Welcome everyone to this webinar. Our topic is how to obtain checkbook control over your IRA. Uh, my name is Natalie with Sense Financial and we are a boutique financial firm specializing in self-directed retirement accounts with checkbook control. Since uh, 2010, we have assisted over 3,000 clients and established more than 4,000 self-directed retirement plans. Um, before we jump into tonight's presentation, I would like to briefly introduce Dimitri Vomachenko, who will be our presenter tonight. Uh, Dimitri is the founder and president of Sense Financial LLC Services, and he began his career in financial planning and real estate investing back in 2000. Um, he is a licensed California real estate broker, a real estate investor, and also a private lender. Over the years, he's taught hundreds of investment and financial planning seminars and has mentored thousands of investors. So thank you, Dimitri, for presenting tonight, and I will let you take over from here. Uh, thank you, Natalie, for the introduction. Uh, can you hear me okay? Sounds good. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started. Uh, just a quick display disclaimer here that uh, we are not a fiduciary. We do not provide legal tax investment or accounting or any other professional advice. If you need such advice, um, you should consult a qualified expert. Um, but uh, um, what we do here at Sense Financial, uh, our mission is to help our clients obtain controlled and protect their retirement accounts. We know that you work hard for your money and we want to make sure uh, that your money is working hard for you as well. Uh, Proverbs 21.5 says that good planning and hard work leads to prosperity and we do want to come along your side on this journey and, and help you. Uh, ensure that. So what is a self-directed IRA? It is a, a tax deferred trust account that is held by the IRS approved custodian. Note that uh, you must have a custodian for an IRA. If you have an IRA, custodian is required and that has to be, uh, that can be either a bank or, or a trust company. But uh, with the self-directed uh, IRA, the custodian allows you to invest in non-traditional assets. They've been around since uh, 1974 and they're designed to uh, help Americans just like you and I uh, put money away towards retirement. Why are self-directed IRA still little known? Well, because your uh, financial advisor and your uh, uh, stockbroker, they uh, probably don't want you to know because they want to keep you invested in the market because that's how they make money off of you and uh, or maybe they even uh, not aware of them uh, themselves that's also a possibility i've seen that but these types of accounts they benefit american saving for retirement under internal revenue uh, code section 408 just a quick comparison between a conventional IRA, if you have a retirement account, uh, either an IRA or uh, perhaps a qualified retirement plan with your employer, such as 401k or 403b, 457 or a pension. Those accounts, the conventional retirement accounts, they're confined to the stock market. And the investment options that you have with your plan are uh, most likely mutual funds. There's maybe a, a dozen of mutual funds, uh, perhaps some bonds or stocks. But with the self-directed uh, retirement account, on the other hand, your investment options are virtually unlimited. So you control the investments and uh, the investment, some of the most common investments are real estate. You can, uh, uh, buy residential real estate, you can buy commercial real estate, you can invest in industrial real estate, you can invest tax liens and uh, tax deeds, you can buy mortgage notes and trust deeds. You can also invest in a private business that is not publicly traded. If it's not publicly traded, then you, you can't invest in that uh, uh, business with a conventional retirement account, an IRA or 401k. Uh, 
you can also invest in real estate internationally. We do have clients who invested in Canada, in South America, in uh, India, in Japan, in, in Europe. So um, there is virtually no limitations there. There are some restrictions, the rules that you need to be aware of. I'll go over that slide uh, a little bit later in the presentation. But you, as far as investment options, those are wide, wide open. You can also do uh, um, or use your IRA as a bank and you can do private lending with it, which is uh, my personal preferred way to invest. And you can also do traditional stocks and mutual funds. Some people, uh, uh, I think they, they perhaps been um, or, or have this misconception that uh, self-directed IRA can be only invested in real estate. Well, real estate is well, probably one of the most common investments, but it's certainly not the only investments. As you can see, those are just some of the um, common investments. In fact, when you hear someone say that, well, this is a IRS approved investment, that's, <laughs> this is not true. IRS does not approve investments in IRS uh, only uh, gives you limitations, gives you the rules what you cannot invest in. But there is no such thing as IRS approved uh, investments for IRA. Uh, and we want to make sure that you're not uh, a, a couple like this, where uh, husband and wife, they're approaching uh, retirement and <laughs> man says, I finally decided to put something aside for our retirement which is our plans to retire. Well, you do want to start planning early. There is a saying that says, if you uh, fail to plan, you, you're planning to fail. So I'm glad that you guys join and you're looking into this because you're, you're, that's indication that you're planning towards retirement. The benefits of a self-directed IRA, that number one, it allows you to invest in non-traditional assets. It allows you to achieve true diversification. If you're investing, for example, in mutual funds, and mutual fund is uh, a, a, a type of a diversification. You're achieving some diversification uh, with a mutual fund, but it's only one asset class. You, you, you're investing in equities, and the mutual fund uh, managers, they buy perhaps hundreds of different uh, stocks, and you're Every time you invest in a mutual fund, your investment gets broken into 100 different pieces. So you do achieve some diversification there. But again, it's uh, it's uh, just within that one asset class. And you don't have any control over that. You you have zero control. You, you're fully relying on the fund manager. Uh, when you uh, make the investment and let's say you buy real estate or you do a private loan or you invest in a private uh, company, the returns that you generate from those investments are tax deferred. You're not paying any taxes on that. And that's very powerful because you can take advantage of the compounding interest. So uh, if you invest personally in, uh, in something, then uh, every year, you generate uh, income or a profit or gains, that's subject to taxation. When you do it inside of a, uh, a tax deferred vehicle, such as self-directed IRA, those gains are sheltered from taxes and you can reinvest them. Uh, so your investment will grow much faster. Uh, also, when you uh, buy uh, and then sell real estate inside of your uh, self-directed IRA, there is no capital gain taxes. You can um, uh, defer that or, or avoid that completely by utilizing a rod. And uh, you can also use leverage uh, uh, with uh, within your self-directed IRA. You can uh, actually uh, finance a purchase of an investment property using an unrecourse loan. A little bit more on that uh, later. So how does the self-directed IRA works? Well, step number one, you open a, a new uh, account with the IRS approved custodian. Again, you must have a custodian that uh, uh, holds your IRA. And the self-directed custodian allows non-traditional non investments. Then you fund it with the qualified transfer or rollover from existing retirement account. Because the contribution limit uh, for an IRA is so small, only $6,500 a year, uh, plus $1,000 catch up for 
those who are over 50, in most cases, almost all cases, those accounts are being funded with the rollover or transfer from another qualified retirement plan. Once the account is uh, open, then you, as the account owner, you direct the custodian. That's why it's called self-directed. You tell the custodian what you want to do, what you want to invest in. And you, you can buy a piece of real estate, you can buy uh, a, a trust deed, you can buy paper, uh, and all of the income uh, from those investments flowing back into the uh, custodial account, and all of the expenses, they're... Uh, being paid from the IRA expenses such as again if you have a rental property and you have to pay property tax bill or insurance bill or pay for the repairs and you don't have access to the account yourself so again you have to go through a custodian uh, essentially a middleman between your IRA and you yourself so you go through a middleman you tell them okay you got to pay this fee uh, this uh, expense a custodian will process that request and charge you a fee for this. So that's some of the disadvantages of having a self-directed custodial IRA because th there are a bunch of fees you pay for every transaction. And also there's a lot of red tape. You got to go uh, through the custodian, you got to submit the request, submit the paperwork, wait for them to execute that, which may result in uh, you losing a deal if, if there is a timely transaction. So to summarize the disadvantages of a self-directed IRA, there are delays. You can't uh, execute that transaction immediately. You're, you're lacking the control again because the, you, you have a middleman in between. You have to deal with uh, a bunch of red tape uh, that is associated with the custodian. And, um, and also in, on top of that, you will have to uh, value the assets annually because you have to provide that uh, asset valuation to the uh, custodian. And then uh, uh, fees for issuing a check, for uh, buying uh, investment or selling investment, uh, custodian will charge you a fee for that. And there is also transaction and asset-based fees. So some of the investors who, who, who want to have more control, who want to be more uh, hands-on, they don't like this uh, uh, structure, and that's where the checkbook IRA comes in. So what is a checkbook IRA? Uh, another name for it is IRA LLC or IRA Trust. A special purpose LLC, which is a limited liability company, or a special purpose trust is created. And uh, one of these vehicles is created to be owned by the IRA. Uh, it does require IRS compliance setup and the operating agreement. And uh, this structure will allow you to bypass the custodian when making investments and or transactions. So you no longer have to go through a middleman, but you can actually have a checking account with your IRA funds and you can make the transactions as quickly and as easily as writing a check. So let's uh, look uh, on this diagram to see how it actually works. Well, number one, again, you have to open a, a new account with the IRS approved custodian. Again, custodian is required for every IRA. Then you're gonna fund that with the qualified transfer or rollover from your existing retirement account. But that's uh, step three, that's what the difference is. The main difference is here. We're going to create a special purpose LLC or a special purpose trust. Uh, it's uh, uh, created with a single uh, purpose to be owned by the IRA. Uh, and uh, you are the manager of the LLC or a trustee of a trust, which gives you the authority to, to control the investments of this vehicle. Next, you will open a, a bank account for the LLC or a trust and uh, uh, that bank account is funded. So the funds are transferred from the custodian account to the LLC checking account or a trust checking account and you as a manager or a, a trustee of the trust control that. You now uh, no longer have to go through the custodian, no longer have to go through a middleman to acquire an asset or to make an investment transaction. You decide what you're gonna invest in 
and you are going to execute that. So custodian is no longer required to sign the, the purchase agreement, for example, because when you buy in a property inside of a custodial self-directed IRA, custodian actually will take the title on behalf of your IRA. So to give you an example, if you buy in a rental property inside of a custodial IRA, the, the title will be held as follow. Uh, just again, example, ABC Trust Company is a custodian for John Doe IRA and then IRA number. So that's typical, typically how the title is uh, taken. Well, guess what? When you use the checkbook IRA, the title is taken in your uh, in the name of the LLC or in the name of the trust that uh, IRA owns. And uh, all of the income from those investments flowing back into the checking account of that entity and all of the expenses that are related to those transactions are paid by you by writing a check or nowadays you can do a bill pay you can actually go online and you can pay the bill uh, by having the bank send the check uh, easily or send a wire transfer from the bank again without uh, involvement of the middleman the custodian so uh, uh, this uh, uh, vehicle gives you a number of the advantages. The main advantage is that you're able to uh, bypass the custodian. You gain the checkbook control over your, over your IRA and you're able to bypass the custodian. And uh, that gives you direct access to your funds. The transaction can be uh, um, executed immediately. So if you're at uh, some kind of real estate networking event and you uh, talk, talking to somebody and uh, there is an opportunity, investment opportunity, you potentially can secure that deal right there and then. Um, very convenient. If you use a, uh, an LLC, you also get the added protection from litigation. Uh, the, the fees are, are fixed. There, there is no more transaction or asset-based fees. You just pay in a, a nominal annual fee to maintain that and the uh, uh, title to the investment assets that you're acquiring will be held in the name of the LLC or a trust. Um, I mentioned about the cost effective uh, uh, of, uh, of this uh, vehicle. They are very cost uh, effective. The annual uh, fixed custodial fee is only $225 a year. So you're eliminating all the additional fees that might come with the, uh, uh, having the custodial account. Now, a couple of caveats to this is that uh, if you are setting up an LLC, using an LLC, LLC requires uh, a registered agent. If you're doing this in the state where you reside, you can be the agent. Uh, but if you're doing it in the, LLC, in the state other than the uh, state of your residence, you need to uh, acquire uh, registered agent service, which is uh, just about $100 a year. Then also depending on the state in which uh, LLC is set up, there can be uh, some uh, fees uh, also. Some states don't have fees, example is Arizona or Texas, but some other states, they do have significant fees. Uh, California is the most expensive state to have the LLC that comes at the uh, annual cost of $800 a year. That's why uh, IRA Trust is so popular for our California clients because it provides them with the significant savings. You can also acquire real estate inside of your uh, 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 IRA, as I mentioned. The income and the gains generated uh, are tax deferred the taxes will be paid at the future date rather than in the year the investment produces income. So you're able to, again, uh, accelerate the growth of your investment by uh, using compounding return. The real estate income and gains generated by the Roth IRA are tax-free because if you have a Roth IRA, you can do this with the Roth IRA as well. So any IRA, whether it's traditional or a Roth, uh, can be self-directed and you can set up a checkbook again, just uh, like you can do it for traditional IRA, you can do it also for a Roth IRA. Income must go back into the account. Remember, you control it, but you cannot use it. 
uh, it is for the for your future use when you take the distributions from your IRA. Otherwise, you'll be committing a prohibited transaction. So, again, you're controlling the income and assets of the uh, of this retirement vehicle, but you you can't use it yourself. And all of the expenses that are uh, related directly to the investments that uh, your uh, IRA, LLC, or trust on must be paid from that account. I did mention that you can actually finance uh, uh, purchase of the uh, real estate inside of your retirement account, but um, IRS rules prohibit you from providing a personal guarantee for the loan. That's why a loan must be non-recourse. And non-recourse simply means that there is no personal guarantee. When you buy in a house to live in, right? You buy in a residence, you're going to go to the bank, you're going to uh, apply, uh, so complete an application. They're going to check uh, your credit, your uh, uh, employment uh, history, your ability to pay for that uh, particular mortgage. So it's essentially you're qualifying for the loan. When you buy in a property inside of an IRA, you, you personally cannot qualify. So the lender doesn't look at you, they're looking at the property. They wanna make sure the property is producing enough income. Uh, of course, they'll look at you as well, just make sure you're, you're not some kind of a scam artist. Uh, they wanna see your, your, your history, but they don't look or they don't use your history as a, um, a criteria to qualify for that loan. Again, property must qualify. Property is the only security for the loan. If you default on your personal residence or on an investment property that you own, lender potentially can come after you personally if you're still owed to the bank. But uh, if you default on the uh, loan uh, inside of your self-directed IRA, the only recourse lender has is the property itself. That's why it's called an recourse loan. Uh, typically, these types of loans, they do require between 20 to 50% down payment, depending on the location and depending on the property type. Um, the property must have sufficient cash flow to, uh, uh, to pay the mortgage. So uh, sometimes I get uh, these questions, can I finance a, a purchase of land? or maybe finance a construction inside of a self-directed IRA. And that's, I don't know of any lender who will do that. You, you can, because again, those assets don't produce income. Uh, so that's gonna be much higher risk for the lender. Uh, but you certainly can uh, finance purchase of a single family rental property or a multifamily as well. Uh, lender also will require about 10% uh, reserves to be left in your IRA of the purchase price. Uh, also, if you use financing inside of an IRA, it will trigger uh, UDFI, which stands for unrelated debt finance income. And this is an income that is derived from the financed uh, portion of the property. And this income is subject to UBIT, which stands for unrelated business income tax. It's not a significant, uh, uh, in most cases, but uh, you need to be aware of that. There's only a number of uh, banks and lenders that do this kind of loans. We do have a comprehensive list on our website. So if you go to sensefinancial.com uh, slash non-recourse lenders, you will uh, get that list. So there's about a dozen uh, lenders on that list. And uh, um, I uh, personally, I have experience working with a couple of them. I do have a uh, finance property inside of my retirement account. Getting a loan is fairly simple. It's not a difficult and it's a similar process, just getting a, a regular mortgage. Um, well, using a self-directed IRA means you have unlimited investment options. You can buy residential real estate, like single family homes. You can buy commercial uh, multifamily homes. You can invest in tax leads and trust deeds. Uh, you can buy precious metals. You can also invest in uh, cryptocurrency with your retirement account. Uh, you can be the bank and you can actually lend money to others. Uh, again, I like to do that myself. It's a great way because it's passive. It's uh, the risk is low and you get nice returns on your money your money is working for you. 
the self-directed IRA allows you to have a true diversification. I hope you don't end up as, as this couple, uh, which uh, cartoon uh, the credit for this goes uh, to my daughter a number of years ago and man holding a basket uh, with the bottom uh, that fell off and the basket represents a stock market. And wife says, well, I thought that our investments were diversified, but guess what? If you're just in one asset class, that's that's a basket, that's one basket. That mutual fund that may be di diversified within that one asset class, I've seen too many people uh, during uh, just, you don't have to go back uh, in the beginning of the pandemic uh, where people lost 25% of their retirement savings been wiped out. That's significant. Uh, back in 2008, even uh, more significant uh, drops in the market, uh, uh, some of my clients experienced. But guess what? If you do private lending, as an example, just as I do, my portfolio in, in the beginning of 2000 uh, uh, or in 2020, when the pandemic hit and the stock market was significantly affected, my portfolio of loans was not affected at all. There, uh, I think there, there's been a couple of lates, but uh, it continued to produce the same yield without any effect. Ecclesiastes 11.2 says, divide your portion to seven or even to eight, for you do not know what misfortune may occur on earth. And uh, that is true. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. But one thing that you can do to mitigate the risk is to have multiple baskets where you have your eggs in multiple baskets and not just in one. Well, uh, we talked about a lot of options that are available with the self-directed IRA, but there is certain limitations. So let's uh, talk about that. And those limitations described in the internal revenue code section 4975. And that's under prohibited transaction rules. And that says that you cannot use your uh, IRA to invest in collectibles, to invest in life insurance and the subchapter S corporation. So those are the prohibited uh, or disallowed investments. On top of that, the same rules uh, specify that there is a disqualified person. Uh, and the disqualified person is yourself, the account owner, uh, your spouse and your immediate family members. So your uh, ancestors and linear descendants uh, and their spouses, uh, any entity in which these immediate family members call the controlling entity or management interest. But guess what? So if you, the easy way to remember that is a vertical line. So yourself, your spouse, your parents, grandparents, your kids and grandkids and their spouses. Okay, so that's vertical. But guess what? Uh, you can go sideways. Your brother, your, your sisters or your siblings, your cousin, aunt, uncle, those are not disqualified person. Uh, and you can potentially uh, use your IRA to engage in a transaction with uh, your uh, uh, extended family member. Now, will that be a wise idea? That's a different question because uh, normally, uh, uh, you, for example, I, I had a question recently uh, from uh, a client of mine who uh, was considering lending, uh, doing an unsecured loan to a family member, extended family member. Uh, and uh, that's a bad idea because uh, you certainly don't want to do unsecured loan and you're placing your IRA funds into jeopardy. But that's a different story. So let's talk about the prohibited transactions. Uh, these rules are listed in the Internal Revenue Code section 4975. And they prohibit transactions, uh, any transactions that are direct or indirect. And so let me read them for you. And let me give you some, uh, uh, expand on that, give you some examples. So any sell, exchange, or leasing of any property between a plan and a disqualified person. Example can be this. If you own a property already, you personally own a property, you cannot sell that property to your IRA. That will be a transaction between the disqualified person and a qualified retirement plan. You cannot do that. Now, if you own a property inside of your retirement account, let's say you own a rental, and maybe it's in a 
in a, a, a town where your child goes to school, well, guess what? You cannot lease or rent that property to your child because your child is a disqualified person. If you own a vacation property in your retirement account, uh, neither yourself nor your immediate family members cannot use that property. Next, uh, lending of money or extension of credit between a plan and a disqualified person. That's why the loan must be non-recourse. You're not allowed to provide extension of credit to the qualified plan. Cannot use a uh, personal guarantee. Uh, next one, uh, furnishing of goods, services, or facilities between a plan and a disqualified person. Uh, an example for that will be you're a real estate agent and you uh, have a self-directed IRA and you, buy, you want to buy a rental property, guess what? You cannot uh, be a real estate agent on that transaction. You cannot represent your IRA because you, you actually will be breaking the rules twice. You'd be providing services to your uh, uh, retirement account as a real estate agent and you also be compensating uh, for those services. So that's... Um, uh, the, the, the rule, uh, the, you'd be breaking the rule twice. Uh, next, transfer to or use by or for the benefit of a disqualified person of the income or assets of the plan. I did mention about that in the uh, beginning. Uh, all the income that you uh, that is generated inside of your retirement account, you control it, but you cannot use it. It belongs to an IRA. An IRA is a separate legal entity from you. You, you don't get to use it now. You get to use it in the future, not now. And then uh, uh, next one, any act by a disqualified person who is a fiduciary where he deals with the income or assets of the plan in his own interest. In other words, there can be conflict of interest. All the transactions must be for the benefit of an IRA. And finally, receiving any consideration for your own personal account by any disqualified person who is fiduciary from any party dealing with the plan in a connection with the transaction involving the income or assets of the plan. And that's the, the one that I mentioned, again, being the real estate agent and then being compensated uh, for that. So that's one example. Uh, you, you'll be breaking this rule as well if you uh, engage in a transaction with your uh, as a real estate agent with your qualified retirement plan. Another example is uh, uh, if you're buying a fixer upper property and that needs work, and if you're a handy, uh, you will tend to perhaps do some of the work yourself, but you're prohibited from doing that, regardless whether you get compensated or not. Uh, if you don't get compensated, you don't break this rule, but you still be providing services, which is violation of the IRS rules. Well, uh, if you are uh, uh, invested in the stock market right now, you'd probably feeling uh, similar to this because stock market lately wasn't doing uh, so good. And uh, uh, you may want to consider self-directed IRA to, to, again, to diversify. I do want to offer to all the attendees uh, a complimentary consultation with me. Uh, and you can schedule that by going to our website or contacting our office. Uh, you can uh, uh, just go to my calendar in real time. You can uh, find the time that uh, works for you. And you can block that and we will chat with you about your situation, about your retirement accounts, about some of your goals. And uh, um, I always try to put myself in my clients shoes, so to speak. That's why I want to uh, take the time to learn about your situation and then uh, give you some recommendations. But ultimately, you're going to be making your own decision. Uh, if you want to uh, reach out to us, uh, feel free to contact us. Uh, uh, you can uh, give us a call at this number or you can uh, send us uh, email. Uh, again, visit our website, request a consultation and uh, um, Thank you for joining us. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Uh, well, thank you uh, for the presentation. We have a few questions that we are going to go ahead and answer. 
Um, and again, there was a lot of information um, presented. So if there are additional questions, please submit them and we will um, answer them for you. First question that we have um, is, I don't have enough money in my IRA to make an investment. Can I combine it with my personal funds? That's a good question. And uh, uh, it is possible to uh, uh, partner with your self-directed IRA personally under certain, certain circumstances. But if you have limited funds in your IRA and you have to uh, personally uh, use personal savings, you actually enable in your IRA to participate in a transaction that it would otherwise not be able to participate. So that kind of transaction will not be allowed. But uh, um, under certain circumstances, that might be possible, not in this case. Okay, next question is, what is the impact of UBIT tax when using a non-recourse loan? Uh, impact of the UBIT tax uh, when uh, using non-recourse financing. So when you finance a property, let, let's uh, use this example. You're buying $100,000 uh, uh, rental property. You're going to put $50,000 down. And you're going to finance $50,000. you are going to get a loan for $50K. So that's, uh, you, you have 50% financing. Well, in this case, a fifth, you can still deduct half of the all the uh, expenses uh, first you deduct the first thousand dollars and then you deduct half of all of the expenses the property taxes the mortgage uh, interest uh, insurance property management fees uh, and uh, any repairs that you incur over the year so you deduct half of those again in case of a 50 percent uh, leveraged and then whatever is left that subject uh, that will be subject to UBIT tax. So it is in most cases it's insignificant. Remember, you're use, utilizing a leverage. You're not using your own money. So even if you have to pay a little bit of a tax, it still makes sense. Uh, again, uh, if you're going on a larger scales, the numbers will be higher. But uh, for most people starting out, that's going to be uh, insignificant. So that's that's a general answer to you. But uh, for details, you probably want to discuss this with a, a qualified tax uh, um, advisor uh, because taxes is not my expertise. Okay, another question is, I already have a self-directed IRA with equity trust, and I really don't like them. Can I switch to a checkbook IRA? Yeah, that's, uh, that's not uncommon. Uh, people come to us who have self-directed retirement accounts with the custodial and, and they kind of, you know, get really frustrated with dealing with the custodian because, again, you have this middleman uh, between your IRA and yourself, as I explained in the, in the diagram, and you have to go through them for each transaction. So, yeah, that is certainly possible. Uh, contact our office, schedule consultation, and, and they can help you make the switch. Okay, another question is, I have an LLC set up already. Can I use it for a checkbook IRA? If you have an existing IRA already established, um, you cannot use that IRA for a checkbook IRA. I'm sorry, that LLC for a checkbook IRA because that uh, um, LLC is your personal LLC and the LLC for a checkbook IRA has to be a special purpose single member LLC. So it needs to be set up to be IRS compliant. It needs uh, uh, at the time when it is filed with the Secretary of State. And again, uh, it needs a IRS compliant operating agreement. So it's not possible to use existing LLC, unfortunately. Okay, and um, last question that we have here is, are seller finance property sales allowed? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, read that again. I, I missed a portion. So, um, it's from Ruben, and he's asking, are seller financed property sales allowed? Uh, certainly, yes. Uh, if uh, you would like to uh, buy a property in your IRA and you have a seller who's willing to provide finance, again, as long as it's non-recourse, they don't uh, personally require uh, you to guarantee the loan, which in most cases 
is not going to be a problem, then you can uh, shortly uh, use seller financing and you can uh, acquire property in your IRA with uh, seller carry, carry back. That's not a problem. Okay, uh, this question is from Dev. Uh, do you have to have the property in LLC within the IRA to make it a checkbook IRA? My IRA is with a custodian. Well, uh, similar to the previous question, the office, you, if you already have an IRA uh, with a custodian, the custodial IRA, not a checkbook, it is possible to switch that to a checkbook. And uh, I'd suggest you uh, reach out to our office and uh, uh, let's schedule time to talk. So I, I again, I want to learn uh, a little bit more about you and then we can determine whether IRA LLC or IRA trust will be the the most appropriate vehicle for you and uh, you certainly can uh, can switch but to, to get the checkbook control you do need the LLC or a trust you can have checkbook control with the custodian because custodian by definition custodian controls your IRA so you do need a LLC or a trust to to have checkbook control Okay, another question we have here is from Corey. If you set up the LLC, you will have to factor in the uh, $825 annual fee, correct? To make sure the real estate asset still cash flows. Uh, Corey, the, I, I, you might be referring to the um, $800 uh, um, annual franchise tax in California. That's only in California. Uh, uh, so if you are in California and you want to set up IRA LLC, then yes, uh, that will come at an additional cost of $800 uh, to the state of California. So that's just a cost of having the LLC in California. If you are setting up LLC in uh, some other states such as Texas or Arizona, for example, Ohio, uh, the cost of the LLC is zero. So you don't have that cost. But uh, if you're in California and you want to avoid that uh, uh, fee, then uh, we can do IRA trust for you. Uh, most of our C California clients utilize this option and that uh, uh, trust doesn't have to be registered with the state and that will enable you to eliminate that fee. Okay, well, um, looks like those were all the questions, which brings our uh, webinar to an end. Uh, thank you once again, everyone, for joining us. Uh, if there are any specific questions regarding self-directed retirement plans, uh, please don't hesitate to contact us. We would be happy to set you up with a, uh, a complimentary consultation with Dimitri, just so you can discuss how you can be in control of all of your retirement savings. Uh, thank you again for joining and hope you all have a wonderful evening. Uh, thank you, Natalie, and thank you all for joining and thank you for some of the uh, uh, nice, intelligent questions. I, I enjoyed uh, answering them and uh, I wish you all good night and uh, look forward to talking to you um, uh, on the consultation.